Okay. Okay. Uh, well, damage assessments are continuing across the region, particularly in those areas which were uh, most impacted by the crossing. Um, it has been hampered somewhat by uh, significant uh, weather uh, over the last uh, 24 hours uh, and from today. Um, but uh, as of tomorrow, we'll be endeavouring to get more S air assets into the air to uh, make those assessments um, and support them with ground assessments as well. So that's an ongoing issue. Um, Yassi is continuing westward, however it is weakening. Uh, it is moving towards Mount Isa and is, and is expected to be there in the early hours of the morning. Uh, throughout today we've been working particularly with the smaller communities on the way to Mount Isa, uh, places such as Julia Creek, Hewenden, Richmond, uh, just to make sure that their disaster plans are in place and they can respond uh, to any issues which arise. Uh, but thankfully the clear message is uh, that uh, the communities are well prepared uh, and the cyclone is weakening as an expected to be a low uh, by the early hours of the morning. Uh, since the event began, uh, the region from uh, uh, Cairns to Air has experienced around about a half a metre of rainfall. Uh, we are expecting around two to 300 millimetres more rain over the next 24 hours plus. Uh, so there is significant localised flooding and isolation issues in a number of communities in the region. Uh, that includes places like Ingham, where there's localised flooding and is in fact cut off at this very moment. Uh, also uh, communities such as Guru, which regularly flood uh, during heavy rain periods. And also the Macrossan Bridge is expected to be cut tonight, uh, isolating or cutting off the uh, road access to Charters Towers. So again, there's been a lot of work uh, undertaken uh, this afternoon and uh, overnight and into tomorrow to support those communities. However, uh, it's important to note that the localised flooding that is occurring uh, will be short-lived and it's hoped uh, that it will be cleared by the weekend. Uh, there have been some significant power issues uh, across the region. We're currently looking at around 180,000 homes without power. Uh, Ergon advises us that uh, by tomorrow it is hoped uh, that around 55,000 customers will be back online. Uh, however, there's still a significant number uh, of uh, issues which need to be addressed, both with the transmission line. Uh, it is hoped that uh, aerial access is available tomorrow to conduct uh, the inspections uh, of uh, several hundred kilometres of line. Uh, and there are also a large number of faults uh, and uh, issues being reported uh, in the distribution network system which need to be addressed as well. Uh, that leads to uh, some issues with water supply. Uh, places such as Townsville, uh, Magnetic Island uh, have reported uh, issues in terms of uh, power supply to their water plants. It's not uh, so much an issue with the plants themselves, uh, but we're advised that uh, both Ergon and the local authorities are confident uh, that that power can be restored uh, and the water supplies in those regions uh, can be attended to uh, in a satisfactory manner. And that also extends to the cassowary case areas such as Innisfail. Uh, so those issues are being addressed. In terms of uh, extra resources into the area, um, over the next uh, 24 hours there will be an additional 154 police uh, moved into the region to support existing resources. Uh, and they'll be deployed um, uh, as it's possible into those communities, particularly that have been heaviest hit, uh, to ensure uh, safety and security in those regions. Uh, in terms of SES uh, deployments uh, and uh, calls on their services, uh, there have been around 2,000 jobs have been recorded um, since the event last night. Uh, around 580 of those related to roof damage. So there's a significant uh, workload there for the SES volunteers. And uh, by Wednesday, we're expecting that around 500 additional SES volunteers will be in the region uh, supporting the local resources, including around 100 from New South Wales. Uh, I might leave it at that at this point and maybe ask the Deputy Commissioner to say a few words, uh, and then we're happy to answer some questions. Uh, thank you, Minister, very much. Um, certainly one of the great challenges we are having at, right at this very moment is, is still getting access to some of these areas. There, are, uh, there is issues with rain. Uh, there are certainly issues with uh, roads and, and safe passage of those roads. Uh, at one stage today, uh, we had to remove our people out of Cardwell because of the second surge. So there, were, there was that issue as well in terms of making sure we understand exactly what's happening uh, in the areas, the damage... Um, and then being able to provide that uh, back to the central areas to manage uh, the re restoration of other services into those areas. 
And uh, certainly um, I would ask Bruce Grady to also comment on those issues from the rapid assessment teams. But um, we would ask people not to be complacent. Uh, road safety is a key issue, and I know that I've said this many, many times, but uh, we have uh, significant challenges with the roads at the moment, uh, particularly with the flooding that's now occur occurring up in the north of the state. We don't want to divert very precious resources to be dealing with minor bingles, that sort of thing. So we would ask people, please take care on those roads, drive to the uh, conditions and allow our people to get on with the task at hand, which is to help those people who have been uh, very badly affected by the damage uh, caused by uh, Tropical Cyclone Yasi. Ian, what happened to the 100 people that were unaccounted for at Carville? Can you talk us through that? Uh, certainly I'm happy to. Uh, there was a comment made uh, by a, a local leader uh, in that Cardwell area. Uh, it related to uh, a comment that he believed that there were about 100 people who remained in Cardwell who didn't evacuate and he was concerned for their welfare. Uh, we are working with uh, formal missing person reports and at, at, right at this very moment uh, there is only one and possibly two actual uh, reports of missing people and we are investigating both of those. Are they both just, like, are they just, both just like the previous uh, events where we had the flooding uh, in the Lockyer and in Toowoomba, uh, the, we are hampered in those investigations by the fact that we have many uh, mobile uh, phone towers and much of the mobile uh, telephony uh, which is actually damaged and not working at the moment. And we're very hopeful that um, with the restoration of those services, um, any uh, missing person will be able to be uh, identified very quickly. Are there only two missing people in the whole vicinity, or is it only two in Cardinal? No, to my knowledge, there are two missing persons in, in that Innisfail area, and, and that includes Cardinal. They are officially listed as missing? We are investigating two reports of males who are missing in that area. Can you say ages or anything else like that? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you say ages or any other details? Um, no, both are males. That's all I know at the moment. Did they stay in their homes in that area? No. Uh, sorry. Um, I don't know in relation to one. One is related to a person who was allegedly at a boat uh, when the, uh, at the start of the incident. So are they both related? Were they both in the boat? No, these are two separate matters. But both from the Innisfail area? Yes. Ian, have you uh, got contact with um, Halifaxes in the Towers Beach so Have you accessed everyone? Uh, I cannot comment on the, uh, the coverage yet um, into all of those areas. It is very difficult to get into some of those areas. Um, and again, I'm going to ask Bruce Grady to comment on overflights uh, in terms of rapid assessment. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Look, um, access uh, continues to be a problem. Uh, we have SES uh, with chainsaws cutting their way through uh, to, uh, to access some of these more remote communities. Concurrently, uh, whilst we've had windows of opportunity, uh, we have uh, helicopters uh, with uh, technology to be able to take video streaming uh, of the area to give us a better idea of, uh, of damage. Uh, that allows us to be a little more strategic in uh, where we, uh, we attempt to, uh, to cut in. Um, we're being hampered uh, by weather, uh, both in the air and on the ground, and that will continue to, uh, to be an issue. Um, as we move forward, uh, this will be a long uh, and tedious process of uh, attempting to restore some of these properties. Uh, whilst the weather remains uh, as it is, uh, the safety of our SES volunteers and others, uh, as always, will be paramount. Uh, so we have to do this um, slowly, systematically and safely. Uh, but you can be assured that uh, we will have as many people uh, as, is, uh, as is needed uh, to get this work done as quickly and safely as we possibly can uh, for this community. Do you have a town-by-town -town breakdown of the damage? As the Look, not at this stage. We, we have uh, sketchy pictures of this. We're trying to build that profile by a number of different sources. So as we get in, we'll do some quick assessments around what we believe the damage to be. Uh, we'll try and, and match that with any flyovers that we do um, to get that assessment. And when we can get teams in, uh, we have a highly trained Queensland Fire and Rescue Service uh, personnel, uh, USAR trained uh, teams, that will go in and they'll undertake a rapid damage assessment where they'll go and make a detailed assessment of each property and be able to feed that through. So, Which, which uh, communities are isolated at the moment? 
Uh, at the moment, there are some beachside communities um, around the Cardwell area that are still uh, difficult to access. Um, we're hampered at the moment. Um, as the power has gone out and mobile phone towers are powered by batteries, we're slowly losing those towers. So mobile communications is difficult. We're trying to establish uh, radio communications in the area as well. Do you know how many people are in these beachside communities? Look, uh, we, we were, um, they were subject to evacuation. Um, but we're unsure as to how many, and as we only, had in Cardwell. Is there only those small communities around Cardwell? Is there anywhere else uh, in, that, in that zone that you're trying yeah, to get to? We're also around Ingham, we're trying to get to those coastal communities, Halifax, Lucinda and so on. Um, I'm, we don't have any reports yet of uh, how successful they've been. It sounds like there's a swag of places you haven't got into yet. There are. Will you still try to get into them this evening, or is nightfall going to handle that? Yeah, uh, nightfall weather, um, yeah, that will create dangerous conditions. As we say, we're trying to cut our way through with debris over roads. Uh, we're not going to have people out operating chainsaws in the rain at night. And then, can I just get you to clarify that the two missing men, your so, search for them, does that include in some water? Is that... No, what I said is that we are making investigations in relation to that. I didn't say necessarily we had people out in the field walking around searching for these. What we believe is that we, were, we will uh, undertake our inquiries and hopefully we'll locate them um, alive and well somewhere. It we, like look, quite optimistic at finding them. Absolutely. I mean, this is very reminiscent of what occurred uh, in the Toowoomba and Lockyer Valley uh, incidents where large numbers of people from, in fact, all around the world were actually... Uh, uh, reporting their loved ones as missing persons because they simply couldn't contact them by the normal by their normal methods. And at one stage, if I remember rightly, the figures were up around in the 500 mark that we were actively trying to get. We had specialist teams of investigators who were undertaking the normal uh, inquiries through friends, relatives, neighbours, that sort of thing, and we were able to locate many of those very, very quickly. But this will be a tedious task because, as Bruce rightly said, and as the Minister's alluded to, uh, there are a lot of people who, were in those, who live in those communities, many evacuated, some did not, um, and we will be looking for official reports of missing persons to uh, prioritise our, uh, our investigations and ultimately our searches of those areas. Any injuries at this stage? Uh, there's been no um, reported injuries at this stage. Of course, there will be people with minor cuts and abrasions, but uh, thankfully we've had no um, reports of significant injuries um, to date. How amazed are you about that? Well, I think, as we've said a number of times, uh, given the severity of this event, uh, that is an amazing outcome. Uh, but again, I just reiterate, uh, there has been a tremendous amount of effort to inform communities about the risks uh, where decisions needed to be made to get people out of harm's way that's been taken. And we can only um, tribute, uh, tribute a lot of the, uh, the reason for that lack of injury to people cooperating with authorities and the right decisions being made to get people out of harm's way. When are you expecting to restore power to those water treatment plants? You said they were confident, but what's the time frame? Uh, well, the, the advice that we receive, particularly in places like Townsville, is that Ergon are confident that they can get the power to those places through so, uh, measures such as uh, generators um, tonight uh, and maintain water supply. Well, this is similar to the damage assessment of uh, residences. Uh, we have had the benefit uh, of aerial observation teams today and ground-based teams uh, giving us uh, preliminary assessments of the extent of damage in a range of communities. Uh, in terms of public infrastructure, that again is going to be an ongoing matter over several days. Uh, we know there's been significant road damage in, in a number of areas and to public buildings, uh, but that ongoing assessment is really something which will unfold in the coming days. So we can't put a precise figure or uh, something which gives an extent of that damage at this stage, other than that we know things, for example, as damage to the roof uh, of a hospital uh, at Ingham and, and places uh, have also suffered damage to school buildings as well. Uh, I don't have any further update than what's already been provided um, earlier today. Can you tell us where the specialist EMQ rescue choppers have been? Oh. Um, uh, Bruce can help us out with that. Uh, yeah, we uh, we moved the uh, the helicopters uh, out of the danger zone. 
Uh, two of those uh, craft have gone back in uh, and uh, and been tasked um, with uh, at this stage with minor jobs. Uh, you have to remember that uh, that our craft are uh, significant assets uh, that are set up for uh, for aeromedical and major search and rescue. There have been no tasks of that nature and there are certainly other rotary wing assets that are better able to perform uh, tasks such as resupply and ferrying people around to keep those uh, significant assets available uh, should they be required for search and rescue or aeromedical. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.